As we said at the outset of at the introduction of this bill, Mr. Speaker, um, we object very strongly to this bill being passed through all its stages uh, during the sitting of the House. We think it is a scandalous, in our view, unconstitutional piece of legislation, which we believe the Belizean people should be given every opportunity exactly. uh, to read, understand, and offer their views on before it is passed through this House. In our view, Mr. Speaker, this bill seeks to achieve three central objectives. One, it's placing Petro Caribbean funds wholly outside of the scope, the reach, the oversight of the legislature. It renders the Finance and Audit Act null and void as it relates to Petro Caribbean funds. No accountability, no transparency that they like to boast about. And it's creating and legalizing, Mr. Speaker, mm -hmm. a special fund is essentially comprised of Petro Caribbean funds, which is available to and the use of which is completely at the discretion of the executive. No limits on amounts of money that can be borrowed, withdrawn, and it can be used for any purpose the government sees fit, the executive sees fit. We believe, Mr. Speaker, that this is wholly illegal and unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. We believe it is an act of an autocratic, increasingly dictatorial government and prime minister aimed at creating a legal slush fund for their party political purposes. They were already, Mr. Speaker, abusing the petrol funds exactly. for their political purposes. They recognized that this was being illegally done, mm -hmm. so they now seek to rectify that illegality and making it the law of the day. The bill, as you know, Mr. Speaker, seeks to retrospectively validate loans. It seeks to retrospectively permit unrestricted spending. Mm -hmm. It is, in our view, an acknowledgement that they have certainly mishandled the Petro Caribbean loan and spending. As I said, we believe it is unconstitutional. It violates the rule of law in that it is undemocratic and therefore inconsistent Correct. with Section 2 of the Constitution. Its retrospectivity exactly. deprives the country of meaningful debate mm -hmm. and transparency mm -hmm. before the money is borrowed and spent. It is inconsistent in our views with Sections 114 and 117 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It could not have been and is not being enacted for any peace, order, good government, and is therefore inconsistent with Section 68 of the Constitution. It seeks to disregard, as I pointed out, the Finance and Audit Reform Act, which was enacted in pursuance, as you know, of Sections 114, 115, 116, and 117 of the Constitution. And of course, Mr. Speaker, as you well know, it is an attempt at legislative adjudication in seeking to affect the outcome of the pending claim before the courts. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Speaker, you know that if you go back, as the, those in the UDP like to do so often, if you go back to the years of 2005, you will know that the people of Belize demonstrated to ensure that there was a finance and audit reform act and to ensure that inside that act there were certain provisions that mandated Parliament to approve government borrowing and spending mm -hmm. beyond a certain amount. Mm -hmm. It is not our understanding, Mr. Speaker, that back in 2005, the people of Belize felt that those provisions inside the Finance and Audit Act only applied to a PUP government. Mm -hmm. And it is certainly not our understanding, Mr. Speaker, 10 years later, now in 2015, that the people believe that the Finance and Audit Act should not apply to the United States. The 
now turn upside down, Mr. Speaker, to turn on its head the provisions of the finance and audit act without any express statement of approval from the people of Belize is a violation, we certainly believe, of the law, but certainly of the spirit of all those people who demonstrated and insisted that they wanted a finance and audit act to keep the executive honest and on their toes. The truth be told, Mr. Speaker, it is an absolute betrayal of all those unions, students, teachers who marched against the Let it be clear, Mr. Speaker, that we on this side of the House are prepared to come to the National Assembly every week, if we are required to do so, to examine, to debate, to approve or disapprove of petrocarine funding bills as they arise. We are prepared to do that, Mr. Exactly. Speaker. We dare say that it is beyond a case of laziness on the part of the government. All right. Those on the other side are all at once delusional and disingenuous. No one voted them to be gods, Mr. Speaker. Right. No one declared them to be the last of the living saints. Mm -hmm. The people of Belize do not trust them any more than they trust to leave their good clothes on the line in a yard with no fence and no dogs. <laughs> no matter how cheap the money, no matter who is lending the money, Mr. Speaker, no matter what the money will so be used for, the Parliament of Belize has to approve. <laughs> Those on the other side, Mr. Speaker, well know this, and that is why they are bringing this bill to ram down our throats in one house meeting, Mm -hmm. And this late hour, if their motives or intentions were good, were sincere, Mr. Speaker, were not so sinister, they would allow for House committee meetings so that the unions and students and other Correct. business community and mm -hmm. others could weigh in Correct. on the issue and in this particular case indicate whether they are in 2015 amending the spirit of what they approved and demanded in 2005. But Mr. Speaker, we think that there is a more sinister plan afoot here. We have yet to see any tendering procedures, Mr. Speaker, being followed for the contracting of the $126 million of the Petrocarine funds that the government says they have spent so far. We have not seen any audit, any report on how the $30 million was spent on the International Bank. We have yet to see a report of the tendering procedure used in determining who spent and how they spent $11 million. The Prime Minister says he has spent on the Lake Independence Boulevard and the Chetamal Street Bridge. We have yet to see, Mr. Speaker, an audit on the $30 million the government says they have spent on so-called social support and community assistance. We have yet to see on which property and equipment $7.1 million of the Petrocarine funds were spent. And we have yet to see on which sporting facilities they spent $5 million and whether we got value for money. And the list could go on, Mr. Speaker. We don't want a list of things they spent $126 million on, Mr. Speaker. That simply won't do. And we don't want to hear that the financial secretary says it's all fine and well. So that is that not is. good enough either. We want to see the auditing. Correct. So today, Mr. Speaker, we say enough is enough. We cannot support a bill that seeks to allow the use of petrocarbine funds for any purpose in any amount without national assembly authorization. <laughs> we cannot In fact, Mr. Speaker, we go on record today to say that as of today, we will not be accepting a single dollar from the Petro Caribbean Fund.
da ne va. Yes. Mr. Speaker. But if they 